Now the journey from conception till now has mimicked life itself. Challenging and full of twists and turns that were sometimes daunting and difficult to surmount, particularly in real time. With each passing phase, the values of the learnings bond at the process become inestimable. Now, not to, not to talk of the complexities involved in navigating the project, from conception through negotiation of joint venture and partnership agreements between very diverse principal shelters, including the federal government of Nigeria, the government of the People's Republic of China, the Lagos State Government, the Tolerant Group, China Arbor Engineering Company, and of course, China Development Bank that made the deal happen. They were unnerving and sometimes frustrating. But the resolve and collaborative sense of purpose of all parties eventually prevailed, and that's why we are seated here today. Indeed, given that this is one of the most economically impactful projects implemented during this administration tenure, I make bold to recommend it as a case study of how partnerships between public and private enterprises should be conducted regardless of the differences in cultural and natural interests of the parties involved. The story of Legacy this report will not be complete without the acknowledging and paying due respect to the imagination of Ashwa Jovala Mechinombo. The vision of Talaram led by Pamoa, the courage of China Harbor Engineering, and the fusion of equity capital of almost $200 million, you know, at the commencement of the project that actually came in right in the middle of the pandemic. And I think that should be acknowledged. And that is despite the unprecedented COVID global pandemic. And of course, we have the, the answers. I'm sure you recall that. Despite all this, the money still came in. Now, the spirit, spirited credence of uh, Mr. Governor, Bamajide Songolu, who personally undertook the process of getting immigration approvals for the technical staff and management from China, as well as obtaining the approvals of the federal government through the Ministry of Aviation for special flight operations between Beijing and Lagos, must be specially recognized and recorded in high state, in high state. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Governor. Undoubtedly, this move ensured the timely delivery of the project that we are witnessing and on budget. I must at this juncture commend the effort of this construction crew of over 150 Chinese and 1,500 Nigerians 
that kick-started this budget, despite the, all the disruptions I mentioned above. And subsequently, the over 350 Chinese and 2,500 Nigerians that worked tenaciously at the peak of the project's execution. They were working 24 hours, seven days a week. We're here to, to officially, you know, um, hand over the completion of the Lekki Deep Sea port. This, for me, is momentous, is, is historic, is a confirmation of the strong can-do spirit that exists in our country, but more importantly, is about building partnership. It's about building resilient partnership, identifying real key stakeholders and working through them. So this is not only about Lagos State, it's not only about country, Nigeria, but it's about the Czech, the China above, the Tolerant Group, and all of them coming together. And this project has been delivered on budget, on time, and with the highest quality. And mindful, you know, we took about over a year, a year and a half of COVID. The work never stopped here for one day. Almost about three years ago, we signed the loan agreement, you know, with, with China Arbor, and they did committed to that. In 36 months, they will complete this project. I'm so excited that at the end of the 36 months, indeed, we can see that the completion of this project to hand over the deepest deep sea port in our country, the deepest deep, deep sea port in the whole of West Africa. This port will take three times some vessels that hitherto cannot bath in their country. They will come in here and they will bath. And so you can imagine the GDP that it will translate to. You can imagine the commercial transactions and value of this entire ecosystem. You know, the number of youth that will be employed. Like you said, directly and indirectly, almost 200,000 jobs will be created. Over the years of this thing, we'll see hundreds of billions of dollars being revenue, you know, that will be contributed to the GDP of this country. So this is momentous. You know, development in nations usually happens around ports. If you go and check the development of Singapore, it works around their ports. That's what, I mean, it takes you 10, 15 minutes to clear a vessel, you know, you know, in, in Singapore. That's the kind of thing we want to replicate here. And what that means is that Lekki Port can become a transshipment where modern vessels will come, then they will now begin to transship to other West African countries. And once they come in here, it's revenue. There's a lot of activities that begin to happen. So for me, it's further confirmed, you know, the belief in our partnership, when you identify real partnership and everybody has worked too very well. I must commend the federal government, MPA, the Ministry of Transport, I must commend our financial partners, China Rabo, I must commend the Tolerant Group, I must commend CMA that will be the operator, but more importantly you can see my chairman here, who is the chairman of Lekki Port himself, you know, for their doggedness, you know, they worked tireless. You heard when they were saying people were working here 24-7 to ensure that they completed this project. You know, at a very difficult time during COVID, we had to get extra, extra special, you know, approvals for them. And I'm so, so excited that we're running this state at this time. And for me, it is a demonstration of our commitment as a government. We make the environment conducive for them. The host communities, they've been very, very accommodating and we'll continue to do that. And there's still a lot we're going to do. We're going to be opening up the roads, we're going to be expanding the road construction, and we're beginning to see, you know, change of life and property. You know, at the end of the day, citizens will be engaged, our people will be, will be employed, and the economy and the GDP of our country will certainly be better off for it.